Okay. My love. <laughs> it is 2023. We're on YouTube right now. And we haven't posted anything here for like three years. And a lot has changed <laughs> in between. And we got a comment on our first video from a few days ago saying that it's time for a life update. And we've been meaning to do like a podcast or something like that long form chats for a long time, just never found the time to do it. And so now we're here in Australia doing a van road trip 2023. We thought we'd get back into it. We've got Riley here to help us with the content. And I think this is a perfect time for us to talk and get some things out there and maybe starting with how everything ended on YouTube three years ago, how it ended and why, and then kind of what happened after. Am I allowed to look into that camera as well? You're or talking not? to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a spontaneous thing. All right, let's start with the end. I like it. Um, it came a bit unexpected, I guess, because the pandemic hit in March 2020. And just before that, we actually went on an amazing trip to the Philippines. Uh, we vlogged the entire thing. We actually just watched it yesterday to just see what we had done back then. And yeah, everything changed. We moved to Bali or we got um, stuck in ba Bali purposely um, or on purpose. And that's how everything changed. A lot of things changed. We stopped YouTube. We started thinking about businesses. We, for the first time ever, were in one place and we weren't moving all the time. Well, we were with Elliot in the Mentawai Islands. This is after the Philippines trip. True, yeah. And all of the news started coming out about this virus. And we were on this island being like, ah, oh, it's not going to be anything. You know, yeah, it's, it's not going to be, a, it's not going to be a big deal. It turned out to be a big deal. And a very big deal. Elliot decided to go home to Australia. And like you said, we were kind of thinking, where are we going to stay? So we chose Bali. Let's stay there. And then for two and a half years, we didn't get back together with Elliot because it was impossible to get in and out of Australia. But also it was a time for us to kind of be like, wow, we needed it. The break. And I think we can talk about that. We did Instagram and YouTube for 18 months like crazy. And Instagram for two and a half years with YouTube on top for 18 months and just having a third person Elliot we absolutely loved him he did an amazing job we kind of started to feel like we were losing our relationship a bit would you yeah. agree yeah 100 percent. I think when we first started our Instagram it was because we liked creating we didn't really think we would make anything out of it and then once we started growing on the Instagram Jake being a visionary person was like oh we know how to do photos now after doing this for a year I want to do videos and that's how YouTube started and it was very intense um, I mean at that time I was struggling a lot with my skin so I was very intimidated to be in front of the camera um, I was nervous to do YouTube but it, because it's not me filming myself, it's someone else filming me. So that was really uncomfortable and it was just very intense. Every trip was morning wake up for sunrise, shoot until sunset, post and edit afterwards. It was non-stop. We loved it. I, I missed it during the pandemic time but it was intense. And it was back then more travel focused and less lifestyle focused, but we kind of had to change to lifestyle because of the whole way everything worked, the way the world changed. We couldn't actually travel. So we had to pivot into a different niche really. And yeah. it, it felt good at the time, like we needed to, to change because we just couldn't travel perpetually forever, country to country to country, because we were starting to get burnt out. But what essentially happened was that Elliot was then went back to Australia. It was kind of a really perfect time for us to say, okay, let's slow down. Elliot went home, got a lot of jobs in Australia, built up his agency and did everything that we thought he would. Because when we first got together with him, the deal was kind of, you come with us, 
shoot with us, go hard with us, let's grow together. And then when you feel like you're ready to go off and do your own thing, we will never stop you and we'll always support you. And that's exactly what happened. And because of his talent, he was able to do that. But then we were kind of left to be us again. And then a lot changed. Reels came into the mix and there was so much stress around the world with COVID and all of that. Uh, that we, yeah, we we really needed a bit of a, a step back. I mean, first of all, when it happened mid March, we didn't know what it was. I was scared because people were telling us, "Come home, it's not safe in Bali." You, the way you are, you were like, "Nah, it's gonna be fine." People here believe in karma. They're so nice, and um, they most most products are coming from the island, so it's not gonna be an issue here in terms of groceries or whatever. So yeah, we just decided to be there. And to be very honest, I don't know if we've ever. I think we have talked about it on Instagram at least. We wanted to find a place where we could build our first base as well, like or have a base. And we always thought that would be Bali. So it was. A good moment for us to just try that out just a bit unexpected yeah we've said that if it wasn't for everything that happened the close of the borders yeah. and the slowing down of basically the entire world we wouldn't have focused on our big projects because we were so hooked on the travel the travel getting that next viral clip and just moving to create that content so when we were forced to stop, that's when we were forced to think, okay, what can, what have we always wanted to work on that we didn't have the time for that now we do? And it became apparent very quickly that that was Club Life Design, the academy. We were looking to build courses when we were traveling and it was just so hard because we were constantly moving. We couldn't sit down and put our heads together and actually focus on something for weeks at a time. I think we were a bit naive because I remember we planned 2020 before the pandemic hit and we wanted to create and um, do the course and pub pub uh, publish married. the course before the um, wedding and it, that was in June. We we're like, yeah, that's easy. In two months we can create a course. And obviously the, the wedding had to be cancelled and also the course, we realized it's much harder to put something valuable together than and it looked like in the beginning we had no idea. So mm. it was a learning we're doing. And I think you said it well the other day when we were listening to that podcast. Um, you said life goes in seasons and you can't compare one season to the next season. And I think the first couple of years was more focused on the growth of the community. So like the season of growth. And then 2020, we decided, okay, now we're going to build businesses. We're going to see what, what can we actually do now that we're not moving that much. And instead of sitting down and crying about the whole situation, we said, let's get to work. And well, then I cried first. You did, <laughs> yeah, there was actually a lot of tears in between. It was, but yeah. we did, I think mainly because of me making the first step and then you helping with the operation of it, we bought land, then we started to build we started to build the uh, Club Life Design, which was with Raquel and Miguel, which is a whole story that maybe we can get into on, in another chat just about how that all came yeah. about. So for anyone who doesn't know, Club Life Design is our now um, really well put together academy, online academy, where we teach people how to do social media, how to work online and so on. But it was all a little idea. We wanted to create a mobile editing course first and we just wanted to help people achieve the kind of success that we had with social media content creation online entrepreneurship and give them all of this insight that we'd been that we'd learned over the years yep. doing what we do and now we actually have 16 staff working for this company and 16,000 students 16,000 students it was amazing to see how that really went and that was all riding off the back of building our socials and that's what we teach it's like if you can build a strong social network or a strong community on your social medias tiktok youtube twitter facebook instagram you can turn that into anything and that we were able to do that which was amazing and then on the side of that build two hotels plus a fashion brand <laughs> plus a fashion brand and i just i think it's important to note that we were like pulling our hair out at some stages and you were mo <laughs> you were very upset with me 
a lot of the time, a lot of people think that we have a per- perfect relationship because of social media. And, you know, you do really show a lot more of the good side than the bad side. And I think doing this kind of form will help us kind of scrap that and show people that we are real and, I mean, yeah, and normal. I think if you follow our stories, you, you see more of the behind the scenes and a lot of things that are not going well and mental issues and so on. But if you're only looking at the reels, which is like a creative mm. outlet of like couple travel um then you would think it's perfect but yeah definitely will give us a chance to be a bit more um showing the behind the scenes and stuff but i can definitely say we are not mocking around if we're doing something we are we are like let's do it both of us we're very active people we Mm. sometimes don't really think things through we're just like let's do it and this is how we were able to start a lot of things and then along the way we we make it better we get people in but we we i think one thing we're good at is just starting and then see how it goes and if it doesn't go well we continue with something else and that was the same with the instagram and the youtube and now also the TikTok, but um, also with the businesses, we just went for it. Yeah. And we dive in, even if we don't know how to do it, we'll find a way to learn how to do it. And so, yeah, that period of time, it was stressful for sure. In Bali with the land and the build, oh God, yeah. things got hectic, got a bit out of hand. There was challenges that came up. And I, actually, I think we can talk about it right now because we're, we're going through this period of the three years of what happened. But when we bought the land in Bali, it was amazing. We found some really good land while we were doing our club life design stuff as well. And we decided to get it. It was a great price. Everything in Bali at the time was just plummeting, the land prices, because it, it was the beginning of the lockdowns and things. And all of the expats left Bali. They were... yeah panicked scared they left we decided to stay and i listened to a lot of podcasts about finance and investing and all that and the golden rule is when people are panicking and afraid you need to be greedy and when other people are greedy you need to be afraid and so that was a a moment where i was like well everyone's panicking right now the price has just completely dropped bali is a global destination it's gonna come back if 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 the borders open up it will come back and so that was the thought process of saying like let's get the land now and then we had all of these past experiences from staying at beautiful hotels that we really had a pretty clear vision on what we actually wanted to build and we started with our developers you started with the first sketches like just in a notepad of like this is our 700 square meters of land that we bought I think this is where the dining area could be. We could have three guest bedrooms here. The pool could be in the middle like this. And then this kind of, we put our heads together then and said, okay, that doesn't really make sense. That doesn't, we put it. And then we went to the architect, built a Pinterest board, a mood board of all the aesthetic, the style, like what the bathrooms could look like, what we wanted the taps to look like, what we wanted the bedrooms to look like. We took that to the architect, the first... (laughs) The first uh, was horrendous. <laughs> iteration of what we got w- was very Balinese, <laughs> which we kind of expected. And we went, we said to the architect, Do it again. everything that you've learned in your degree here in Bali or in Indonesia of like architecture, just like throw it out the window and just try to visualize what we're going for and look at Greek architecture and look at these hotels and how they've done that. And then to his credit, Gede, his name was, he was able to like come back with these designs that really started to fill in our vision. And then we also found a girl, actually she found us when we started talking about our projects. She does 3D renderings. She's from Greece. Natalia. And then Natalia. And she helped us to like really visualize um, the the Instagrammable aspects and like the beauty inside of the rooms and stuff. Mm-hmm. So it was, a, it was a long process. But what I was going to say was... Um, yeah just in general um it was just intense like it went from intense traveling and growing like crazy to then intense we are doing everything now like businesses go crazy and then me who has like 
always had the like the most intense relationship to the Instagram. So I was like keeping it alive. I was doing most of the DMs and so on. I was like, well, hold on. What am I going to show now on the Instagram while we're building all the businesses, while we're stuck here? So that was also a challenge. And then also during that time, a lot of things happened. It was like a lot of things like COVID, but also Black Lives Matters and, and um, the bushfire. So like a lot of things happened in the world and we always felt like we needed to to help and do our part but it to be very honest was the first time where I had like a complete mental breakdown because I felt like I could feel the entire heaviness of of all the people and the the, the anxiety and and the worry what's next how will my future look like because I would see all these dms coming in every day so it's a really difficult exciting but also really difficult time for me yeah and being so heavily in the public eye the weight on our shoulders to say the right thing to do the right thing to support the right cause it was crazy because we didn't sign up for that yeah we're not we're not journalists we don't know we don't sometimes know the details and we say something it's not 100 percent correct so it's it's very difficult and when you have over a million people following you you always have both sides you have the people that support a certain cause and others that are against it so what we always found was that no matter what we were going to say there was going to be some people on either side that would hate us yeah and then we realized that when we do talk about something we actually get more hate than just not saying anything which is a a sad reality but people can be really mean and when you're trying to help they put you on this kind of pedestal where now you have to be perfect Perfect, yeah and in social media we've talked to a lot of our friends who are also doing the thing that we're doing and it's the same with all of us we we find that uh the more you put yourself out there the more attacks you get and even if you have really thick skin, it gets to you. <laughs> Which and, I don't have. <laughs> and I have to and I have to say during this period, I started to get a really negative feeling towards Instagram. Yeah. And I could see kind of what it was doing to you. And I felt like it was putting a a wall between us because you would be on your phone and you were getting affected by what people were saying and it was just negative 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 and then you know maybe even the engagements were dropping and it was it was just a hard time and that was when I started to feel like is this the life that I really wanted yeah and now it's been we've had recent talks about where we want to go with our life and what we want to do and part of that is like this conversation we're having right now because we were in a pretty bad place because I wasn't supporting what you really wanted and I was believing that getting rid of the Instagram might have helped us so yeah just to to go back to that time again I think Jake decided during 2020, first of all, he always loved the adventure tra- adventure travel. We couldn't do that anymore. And the cinematic shots. And, and the cinematic that. shot, but we were stuck. But I was like, look, we will need the social media. First of all, for me, it's purpose. I love talking to people. I love, it's like, for me, it's the most amazing fe- um, feedback to meet someone and then they tell me that we inspired them in a certain way or they came to Bali because of us. Like, that's for me purpose and I want to have purpose in my life. But then also... Um, yeah just being able to to be creative but Jake as I said he he lost his passion for it and he was really negative because he's like look all these people are being so mean and like it affects you Marie we always did do good Monday for three years it was your idea to always have a certain cause that we would donate to or help and Mm -hmm. stuff we are not doing this publicly anymore because when we choose one topic on a Monday, we have a hundred people messaging us why we don't help their grandparents or their dogs or their donation. And, and it's just, it makes, it gets you like mentally, it got me at a stage where I was like, I, I need to take care of myself first and before I can help others again. And now we're doing things that don't necessarily always have to be in front of the public eye mm-hmm. where we are helping people. And obviously we're helping people, like we're inspiring people every day. Um, But yeah, it was a difficult time because I wanted to keep it alive. I knew it was purpose for me, but also for our businesses. Like we were building the academy. I knew the Instagram would be amazing for it. Um, So it was was a bit hard and 
and communication between me and Jake was just the most important thing. And it was a lot of up and downs. Yeah. And so what Marie really loves to do, what you really love to do is create and be like a child and go out and have fun <laughs> yeah. and shoot and do all that. You could shoot all day I agree. if no one stopped you. And for me, I've always felt like there needed to be a purpose behind it. And yeah. so without that purpose, I kind of lost my way. Mm-hmm. But what we really did was three years ago, we we stopped really focusing on content yep. for sure. Started focusing more on business, more on like building the academy, building the hotels. And we really put our all into that and we, we did make it successful. And I just like everything, because we worked together, you are a great operator and you are very good in the weeds with the details. I'm very good with the vision, making the decisions to get things started and driving, (laughs) forging the path, I suppose. And then putting those two things together, I think has allowed us to do so much and to be so successful at a lot, but also it's been hard to, to be so different, me and you. Yeah, 100%. Guys, you might hear a bit of background noise because we just said if we want to make this sustainable, we need to wing it. We need to be able to do those podcasts or like updates, YouTube videos everywhere. So So right now we're in a car park (laughs) uh, near the beach in Yamba. In Yamba, on the east coast of Australia. I just went into the pool. I'm still... I've got wet hair and my shorts are wet as well. (laughs) But yeah, this this is as raw and um, unedited. Yep. No, I lost it. So we were saying it makes it hard that we're different. Yeah, it makes it hard and makes it good. So just a couple of tips here. First, my first one you already heard, just go for it sometimes and evolve from something that's maybe not perfect, but you're just starting. Because no, no matter what happens, even if you fail, you will learn from it. Exactly. And that's, we've had a lot of failures. That's what people don't see. Like we've also had that. And then if you're a team, team person like I am, try to find a partner that you start a project with, a business with that has qualities that you might lack like for me I, I'm really good with being consistent um having having ideas but not really pulling them through and Jake's like the opposite he he wants to make the decision he wants to see the vision so it's a bit yin and yang which in a relationship sometimes when you work together can be difficult but for the business aspect it's amazing and we are only like this in business like our relationship is not at all like this so mm. yeah we're just right now working on and I think this is this is something we recently last year started the last six months to do a bit less because we we've grown the socials we've grown the businesses now now it's a bit more of like us time and putting away the ego not having to grow much more or like having to start three new businesses I mean we still do things Mm -hmm. um, but we also want to focus on us and then the third um, point that I wanted to underline is the seasons because you can't compare one season to the other that's what you said so when you were in the beginning focus on the growth season don't start businesses to try try to start a community first once you've built the community only focus on the business hardcore if you focus on one thing clearly and do that for six months one year two years you will see a great outcome and skills so yeah if you're in that growth stage yeah lock yourself in a room figure out what skill you want to learn do that every day and get that locked and then figure out what's next after that and i think a most importantly in our growth stage which was two to three years we didn't expect much we didn't focus on the money part that came with the business it was more about like we want to learn skills grow grow a community and then we focus on the money part we weren't hungry for like it it was never only because of the money and i think that's Mm. very important find something that you're passionate about so let's get back to (laughs) what happened in the three years because we spoke a bit about how it was hard to deal with some of the pressure that was yeah. coming from society because of all the things that were happening. We spoke a bit about the hotels that we were building and how that came about and also Club Life Design. Right now, we have, like I said before, around 16 staff for Club Life Design, around 15 for our hotels. And we've got two really good managers who are handling a lot of the work. We trained them up together and they're just doing an amazing job. Leonie and Ari. Together with Raquel and Miguel. Together with Raquel and Miguel. And having that now has given us, delegating a lot of the work has given us now freedom to actually get back to being creative and 
doing the content that we always loved, inspiring like we like we used to, and traveling a little bit. We're trying to figure out where we want to base ourselves now, what we're going to do. So it's exciting what's coming up. And so I think maybe we should just do five to ten minutes now of what we're excited for, what we're planning to do in 2023. Yeah. So first of all, I want to say I'm grateful that we've built these amazing communities. Jake actually was the one who built the TikTok, which we thankfully got back. It was banned for a bit. Um, but and that... I just built that up to almost 800 just by posting out old stuff. That yeah. was it. So anyone who wants to start TikTok, just post stuff. <laughs> post reels. That's what he means. And be, yeah, be consistent. Just I think that's still a great platform to, to grow right now. And there's a lot of opportunity to go viral. So if you have an idea or even if you just love creating, just keep posting there and don't worry about the results. Just post 60 videos in 60 days and see what happens. Yeah. And then obviously the Club Life Design, the Academy, our both boutique hotels and then the fashion brand, which we're also doing with Raquel and Miguel. These are like our focuses right now. Mm -hmm. um, I am excited to finally have a home. For anyone who doesn't know this, our first, and we get these questions all the time. I don't know if you've seen it in the DM, but everyone asks, why do you have Bella Ja and Marja Changu? They're right next to each other. So Marja Changu is our boutique hotel that looks a bit like Greece. That was originally supposed to be our home. Mm. And then we turned it into to a boutique hotel. And then we have Bella Ja, which is a bit more Bali tropical inspired that we're doing together with Raquel and Miguel. And it has a couple more rooms and it's also like a retreat space. And the reason why Maja Changu is not our house now is because it's 700 square meters, five bedrooms. It's way too big and it's on Batu Belong, which is crazy. And on top of that, it's it was just too good of a business opportunity to pass up. We never built a boutique hotel or anything like <laughs> this before, but we realized, wow, if we can use our aesthetic and our market and in this location and our knowledge of Bali and where people like to be, we could run a really successful business here. And so we said we would prefer to just have a little place somewhere else. We can, Maja Changu can be our trial hotel business and see what happens. And it has really worked. So I mean, it's it's what we wanted for ourselves. It's beautiful. I love both of the places. It's super um amazingly located in the heart of Changu. It's like literally down the road to the beach. And it's just really cool now that all of our followers from all around the world can come to our space that we built with the knowledge of what we like, how to shoot, what cool places you can get content for Instagram. We put all of that in there and now people from all around the world who follow us can experience that. And everyone has been giving us amazing feedback about the place, how much they like it. So that's yeah. just a really good feeling too. And going back to the question you just asked me, so I'm excited to have a little place close by, like seven minutes away. It's just for me and Jake and the dogs and maybe we'll rent it out when we're not there, but we're not planning on it. And then we are also testing out a base in Europe. We haven't really announced where we're going, so should, should we? Yeah, we should do it here. The, the, <laughs> we're giving the, all the secrets here. All of the guys that are listening to this get VIP access to yeah. some information that people don't. So we have we have organized a little apartment, a little but with four rooms. Um, so we have. There's a good price. Yeah, it was a good Mallorca. price in Mallorca, um, a Spanish island that we love. We spent a couple weeks here and there there for the last two years with my family. It has a great old town beautiful beaches the mountains it's not far from germany and we just want to test it out this year and spend some time there with friends and family for three months base ourselves have a place where we can work and also create and yeah we're just testing it i mean we are flexible guys i think you know this uh it could be in a few years that we want to live somewhere else um this is the luxury we have right now um and it's just exciting and I don't think we're going to live in any one place forever <laughs> because I'm always going to miss the dogs in Bali and you're always going to miss the family in Germany and I'm going to miss the family in Australia. So we need to find a way to split those up so that we can ration out our time in between all of the people and animals that we love. And so that this is going to be a test of us living in one place. And that reminds me to also say that living in one place was 
basically impossible for us mm-hmm. when we were travel influencers. Yeah. Because when we're not moving, we don't have content and we're not showing anything. And especially for you having to come up with ideas for what we're going to post and share, it's really hard when you're waking up in the same place. And so we've been working on a new content framework and we're trialing things out right now to figure out how we can give value and give entertainment and fun to all of our audience, our awesome people, and still be in one place. I think that's very important for us. I think I think we've started that, um, obviously, when the pandemic hit because we couldn't travel anymore. We tested um, creating reels with all, of, uh, with all content, but we also did a lot of couple challenges and couple-related content. Doing a bit more fashion because you can wear anything Yeah, anywhere. doing a bit more clothing, doing a bit more um, giving inspiration by... I don't know, just just like Showing good quotes. personality and yeah. our lifestyle. It's so everything. It's a lot of try and error. And I mean, everything we kind of think works. Um, we also always share in the academies. Um, we've just recently created a Reels course, like really focused on Reels because we've realized how difficult it can be even for us. We are big um, content creators, but we still sometimes struggle with what can we post? Uh, what's our niche? Um, but yeah, we, we're just figuring everything out and I'm just excited to be able to also be in one place in Europe for once because when we're there, we're mostly with my mom, but it's also like in my old room and like we like... And we already have some goals that we're planning out. I'm going to do an intensive German course. So <laughs> hopefully at the end of the three months in Mallorca, I can speak fluent German and we're going to do dancing lessons together, right? Oh God, yeah. We're going to do that. And then I think we're just going to travel like the island of Mallorca and show everyone the best spots, the best hotels, best yeah, things to do. and do little trips here and there with, with yeah. a couple of summits um, coming up as well, which I'm excited about. True. I want to do more um, wellness, self-improvement, wellness, also relationship improvement, those kind of things. So I think that's a big focus. In it. And then I think on top of that all, we're just really looking forward to sharing more conversations like this not only with just me and you, but with friends who are also in the industry or who are doing cool things and just other people who who are out there who we think listening to them could help other people, give them some insight and, uh, yeah, and and just sharing more in general about everything that we've learned because... I mean, I'm loving this already. I feel like a lot of things we've just talked about, we haven't really opened up on on Instagram because there's no no outlet. There's no way to do it. And open up properly and not get taken the wrong way because you've got 15 seconds or 30 yeah. seconds and if you go on a big rant on stories on instagram by the third story everyone's swiping away no one wants to see that because they're not there for that they're there to to scroll right and these are the things that we've learned for all of our beautiful people here listening to this they came here for a reason they actually wanted to listen to us talk and hopefully they got what they were after <laughs> But I don't know how long we've been going. I have no idea how long we've been going, but I feel like <laughs> 35 minutes. I think that's a good start. And um, thank you, Hun, for opening up to me and talking to me. <laughs> thank you. Too. And I really hope that we can do this more often. There's so many topics and things we can chat oh, about. Oh, oh, it's just my brain is going because there's so many things we could talk about. Also, you guys, let us know what you want to hear more about. Maybe a topic that we discussed just for a minute here or something that you always wanted to hear about a Q&A around whatever it is just please comment as much as you want and I'd love to do more rounds where we just talk because yeah. I think it can actually give a lot of value so expect more chats guys more vlogs more Instagram reels more <laughs> creative content and uh, more love from us I'm excited for it so if you're listening to this and you want to have any of that stuff Subscribe to our YouTube. Head over to our Instagram. For someone who doesn't know Jake, he's Australian and you don't wear a shirt in it. So please don't comment <laughs> on it. We just come from the beach. I wanted to keep this natural. <laughs> and that means no shirt for sure. Bali style and Australia. Bali style. style. That's what we're known for, right, Tarzan and Jane? <laughs> well, I think we'll wrap it up there. Thanks so much, guys. Hope you're doing well wherever you are. Lots of love. Bye.